Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play WWE 2K14 on the Mysterious JG. We just watched this game's representation of Hogan passing the torch to The Rock. That torch being the the torch of the guy who really only shows up at the big pay-per-views, could hold the title for months at a time without defending. So the Rock doesn't get to do that too much these days. They use the title as a storytelling device a lot more. But yeah, it pops up just a few times a year when he feels like it and is out shooting movies the rest of the time, like Hogan was during the later section of his WWE career, which was, of course, the WWE after. But that's over now. Let's find out what's the new hotness. When it first happened, Jericho, I don't know what the hell happened to me. It felt like I'd been shot in the thigh. Did you have like a Did you have like a T-shirt with like the C word on it? Triple H was that. One warrior mended his wounds. Another shocked the world as Chris Jericho made history by beating both The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night to become the undisputed champion. Y2J is the first undisputed champion. As the best in the world reveled in his triumph, a forgotten hero reemerged to reclaim his place on top of the mountain. As the Booker of the whole Federation. Just in I do have to admit that you know, worked pretty hard to come back. Game, and you can bet your ass I'm back! With a newfound purpose, Triple H dominated at the Royal Rumble, securing an undisputed championship match at WrestleMania against the brash, outspoken champion. I tried to tell you I was not a joke! I have beaten every superstar there is to be! And after aligning with Stephanie McMahon, Y2J appeared ready for the cerebral assassin, but no one should ever count out the King of Kings. If you make it to WrestleMania as the other Disputed champion, unfortunately for you, it will be time to play the game. So we're gonna get like creepy CGI Jericho. No, I like Chris Jericho. Uh, I liked him since basically his first run as a bad guy in WCW. Like everyone else, I thought it was pretty obnoxious and lame when he first showed up in WCW as a good guy. But um, yeah, the first time he actually got to be evil and. You know, was hanging out with Ralphus and the Jericho-holic ninja and making fun of Goldberg. I mean, of course I loved him. Everybody loved him. And I continued to like him in WWE, where he popped out, interrupted The Rock during a promo for hilarious effect. Interrupted Stone Cold. Wasn't quite as funny. Interrupted The Undertaker. Or no, he never interrupted Stone Cold. That was the whole thing. His gimmick at first was going to be he was going to interrupt big superstars and have this, self, this huge self-inflated ego. You know, self inflated idea of how important he was interrupting guys like the rock and uh, undertaker but when he interrupted the undertaker it just kind of the undertaker's comebacks weren't very humorous he didn't have the right personality and gimmick for that like the rock did check out jericho's first promo in wwf interrupting the rock it's pretty it's pretty great but then stone cold basically <sighs> too insecure to allow like you know backstage is like no he ain't gonna interrupt my promo oh hell no i refuse i will not allow that to be booked as part of the show, which would suck, because it would have been great. And uh, Chris Jericho has been chugging along ever since. Not quite the same momentum he had when he first got there. And he always has great matches. He always cuts good promos. He's never quite the top guy, even when he has the title. And as you will see, he'll pop up a few times in WrestleMania mode. And we're not going to play as him, because he don't tend to win at WrestleMania much either. Anyways, oh, and the other thing I wanted to comment on in my smarky smark rant before I get started, Stephanie, I don't remember why Stephanie McMahon joined Triple H instead of, Tri um, sorry, um, Chris Jericho, I guess on screen, well, the on screen story was pretty ridiculous, Triple H, like, drugged Stephanie McMahon and married her at a drive through chapel in Vegas, because he was all evil, and their marriage was like a sham, and it was like shocking that he was this evil bad guy who'd forced poor Stephanie in and eventually eventually though then she decided she liked being allied with him and she was in his corner at that WrestleMania X7 where he like defeated everyone in the world um but now like they split up again and she's helping Triple H and I don't remember why and then she comes back to him and it's just like the wrestling thing it's like the male soap opera she gets against him, then she comes back to him. Why? Just because the writers get sick of the status quo. It doesn't have to make sense. Anyway, enough of that. On February 24th edition of SmackDown, Y2J met with Stephanie and agreed to put their past differences aside. Stephanie would now 
serve as Jericho's business partner. So at least they weren't we weren't meant to think that they were like doing it. Because uh, as a good guy, when Stephanie was still evil, he did a lot of stuff to humiliate her and suggest that she was a slip. The odds were clearly stacked against a still hobbled Triple H at WrestleMania 18. As Jericho promised once again to the quarter of the game in his career, they were not stacked against him. Nobody had any doubt that Triple H was going to crush Jericho going into this. At the 2002 Royal Rumble, Chris Jericho defeated The Rock to retain the undisputed WWE Championship. That might have been considered a, something of a surprise. Triple H, who returned just days earlier after being sidelined seven months at the torn quad muscle, won the Royal Rumble and earned a title shot. Meanwhile, still between Triple H and Stephanie McMahon was brewing. Stephanie revealed that she was pregnant, thus saving their marriage. On the February 11 edition of Raw, Triple H, the phone call revealed that Stephanie was not pregnant. Triple H turned on Stephanie and attacked Mr. McMahon, announcing that their marriage was now over. That was a weird storyline, actually. <laughs> because the storyline there was that they were still married, and, like, I mean, they are married in real life. They actually, I don't know how many, I think they have one child. I, they might have more than one. But no, in real life, th those two are actually married. Um, because in real life, Stephanie McMahon is the actual daughter of Vince McMahon, who is the son of the founder of the original World Wide Wrestling Federation, and it is essentially one of the few family, family-run businesses, uh, of that size. I mean, it's, a there was an IPA, but, you know, whatever, I'm getting way off track. But no, there was this whole storyline <laughs> where, even though they got married under super evil circumstances, they were apparently working things out, but Triple H is a good guy, and Stephanie's character, who had still been around doing stuff, uh, even when he was injured, I guess. It's kind of a bad guy character and not someone the fans really liked very much. And um, they've been very various efforts over the years occasionally to give Stephanie McMahon a good guy run. It usually doesn't work. The fans just kind of don't respond to her that way. But anyway, so there was this whole storyline where she cl where she claimed to be pregnant and Triple H, like his face lit up. It's like he was... He was so happy about this news, and it was going to rescue their marriage. And then Triple H found – like, it was actually a pretty funny reveal. They – somebody – somebody just showed Triple H this video. He had he had spoken to this doctor who had told him that she was pregnant. And then somebody showed him a tourist video where that same doctor was selling, like, condos in Mexico or something. It was, it was such a hilarious reveal that the doctor was a fraud because – well, here's him selling condos. He's an actor. It was pretty actually pretty great. So Triple H, the fans had been wanting him to like pedigree Stephanie McMahon, and he ends up just like beating the shit out of Vince. Uh, it's all fine, well and good, except that it's a pretty convoluted way. And you know, you bring in the idea of like a wife lying to her husband about pregnancy. It's like kind of real world slash soap opera stuff. When basically what they really just wanted was him to be a good guy. So for him to be a good guy, and for Stephanie to join Chris Jericho. People had to lie about pregnancy. At any rate, it's Triple H versus Chris Jericho. Trip Chris Jericho, no matter what else happens, will always be the first undisputed champion in WWE because they basically made up that title when they decided to bring the WCW belt together. I don't remember how that split because now the current storyline, again, off on a tangent, I'm sorry, current storyline is that John Cena and Randy Orton, John Cena is the, quote, world champion, which is essentially supposed to be the lineage of the old uh, NWA slash WCW belt. Um, Randy Orton is the WWE champion, which is, you know, essentially is the belt lineage that ran through, like, Hulk Hogan and, you know, in the WWF. And they're having a match to unify that. But they had already unified it, which is what this title is about. So when did they split them back up? I don't really remember. But the point is we're playing, at triple, we're playing as Triple H. We know who's winning here. He wins at WrestleMania when he's the bad guy, as we saw. He's the first person who ever got to win the main event, even though he's the bad guy. Now he's the good guy. He sure as hell ain't gonna lose now. The following contest is for the undisputed WWE Championship. Introducing the challenger from Greenwich, Connecticut, from Motorhead City. Pounds, His uh, body is made of. Uh, this could be a very shiny, like you know, deli pack ham. Or his career. I mean, this is this weird like shininess to his uh, could be character. It's kind of creepy. As we have been informed, that left quad hanging by a thread, but nothing on God's earth can have kept the game away from this match. God's green earth. Thank you, Jr. Against this man. 
And this man is Triple H. He's going to fight himself. Presumably we're done talking about him, so for time-saving purposes, JG highly tempted to just hit start. Ross Jericho signs it. Let's see. I like Buffy. But no, we got to watch him spit out his water. It's like, hey, Triple H. It turns out Stephanie really was pregnant. You beat her up for no reason. Didn't find that right. She's really pregnant. But it's not by you. He's so stunned. Finally, I timed it right. <laughs> She's pregnant, but not by you. Spit take. You got. I, I really messed up the timing there. But no, the idea of the classic Triple H spit take. Just a good. All right, fine. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Let's get on with Jericho coming out here. Accompanied by Stephanie McMahon. We will totally ruin his intro. Weighing 227 pounds, the WWE Undisputed Champion, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho became the first ever Undisputed Champion in December. He really and did have an epically awesome intro the first the first time he came out on WWF television. It's just beyond awesome. They'd had this mysterious countdown and, and nobody knew exactly what it was supposed to be for for weeks that was set up to end in the middle of a Raw like weeks down the road and the countdown ends and this like pyro goes off the world where Jericho appears all over the Titantron. I mean, it was pretty damn awesome, actually. You can't say that they didn't set him up to be a big deal when he first showed up. Stone Cold kind of undercut a little bit in my mind. She's that damn good. I guess. Apparently it's up to her. I mean, this is what I have heard from the internet and the rumors and whatever. I have no first-hand knowledge of this. Apparently it is up to Stephanie and her husband to, uh, to inherit and run the World Wrestling Entertainment because uh, her older brother Shane apparently just, just ain't that bright. Seems like a nice kid when you see him on TV. He's had some pretty exciting matches where he just jumps around and, you know, gets sent through tables and stuff. Apparently, not a Fortune 500 company running kind of intellect, so most of us aren't. All right, let's see what my special objectives are. I have a feeling this one won't be too bad, unless... Okay, figure four, hold A at the feet of a down opponent. It's just possible that to sell the storyline, uh, my Triple H character here is starting out with legs that are in the devastated, injured mode. But I don't think they they bothered with that. They did, however. Zerfall will be pleased to note. Give Triple H like extra leg bandages. I don't remember Zerfall. Somebody's complaining they didn't put bandages on Hogan when he was like crushed by King Kong Bundy. Apparently, Triple H gets special bandage mode, but other people don't. Uh oh. Hold LT to drag an opponent. Release that to lean an opponent. Okay. As complicated as they we gotta fly a figure four to a lightly Royal wounded Rumble, Jericho. I just apparently Warren totally missed that clothesline because Jericho was like Stephanie, crouched down. Marital troubles? We should have given them a marital the aid, King. Oh, that's right. It was Linda who revealed that her daughter was a lying bag. Linda, the only Stephanie fairly consistent good guy in the entire McMahon family. She doesn't, I mean, you know, such a nasty thing to say. She's not the most charismatic member of the family, but uh, when she does show up, she's pretty much just kind of a, uh, a good guy. I thought I'm supposed to be doing a figure four. I thought they just said it was like an A. Give me a break, King. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar, King. Have you forgotten that she and Triple H planned the entire McMahon Helmsley era? Unsert power from her own father, then toss Triple H aside? Oh, you hold it, that's right. Sounds like a good businesswoman to This me. is not a good way to try to win matches. As Ric Flair himself pointed out, he never beat anybody with this hold. Hey, 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 be careful, Stephanie. Wait a minute. She dug those fingernails right into the 
planet. Surprise. She doesn't seem to realize he's immune to eye damage. But it's hard to tell. She ain't much of an actress. <laughs> Boom. And she can pull off the basic I am concerned. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's 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 pro wrestling in ring acting. You're pretty much doing the old school stage acting, throw it to the back row kind of acting, folks. All right, we got to lean on Jericho. When he not strong, we'll be his nemesis. Is someone to be leaned on by? And Damn it! Damn it! But well, probably not. Uh, probably shouldn't have gone for this. It's going to kill my momentum. I just, I was so excited that I was remembering how to do submission holds at all because they reminded me with that figure four instruction. Ow. He interrupted the rock. <laughs> because I just cut you off from whatever you were talking about, King. They are doing his Y2J impression by interrupting the, uh, Jerry Lawler's little monologue there. Look of concern on Stephanie's face. This can't be how she expected the match to go. Stephanie got herself in Triple H is standing around posing. Don't you miss that, Stephanie? You have to understand her side, Jr. You have to understand her side of the story. You have to understand her side, Jr. Jr. I require you to understand her side. Triple H. Exacting a measure of revenge for the quad injury. I'm going to assume he's got some kind of either a spine buster or knee thing off of the ropes. Yeah, spine buster. Because he uses both of those as a big spot. So, so that's the lean Jericho on the announce table. Easiest way to do that is going to be with an Irish whip. I don't know. Probably don't need to do this. But, oh, come what? Oh, man. I didn't even... Oh. I think as I was hitting the button, it occurred to me, that might be a DQ. Because they don't let you do Diva versus... Oh, you know, that's... That's like one one billion as mean-spirited and misogynistic as some of the things that have happened in wrestling over the years. Ah, oh, I didn't realize that in this game, they don't want the kiddies doing that. They can make it part of the storyline. They don't want the kiddies doing that. Oh, shoot. So I just doubled the length of this video by uh, having some apparently inappropriate fun with Stephanie McMahon and not even the, the sexy kind. Myrtle Troubles. But they didn't have the coupon they should have gotten to the Myrtle Aid Store. Giant lie? You mean Big Show told her? Chris Jericho. Jericho further added fuel to the fire by telling Triple H that he intentionally injured the game's quadriceps. Okay, well that's not going to count because I didn't have him the light damage yet. My bad. Myrtle eight. Little unpleasant plastic novelty items thing. Delivered by the game. One has to imagine. Naughty Stephanie's little pieces of ribbed soft plastic. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. For Triple H. For Triple H. Well, H. A significant dis amazed at this. I mean, they've had well, much better. Evil doesn't look that good. Well, Give for some reason, Lawler sounds fairly natural, but King. Sorry. Hey, Jezebel. <laughs> is it, does does uh, Jim Ross always sound like this? And I've never noticed before. Once again, I don't know why I'm going for these submission holes. I mean, I, I've got to do the damn figure four. Oh, now I'm just like obsessed with not releasing the damn button. We're not, but hopefully this means I'm doing some damage. I'm just trying to get her to stay down for long enough for me to set up the damn... No! I'm... Oh, they reversed. I thought I was going for a different hole. 
So if that WrestleMania moment had not ended with Jericho breaking it up, would I have been disqualified for pedigreeing Stephanie in the ring in a cinematic? I don't think so, folks. The, the game, pulling a page out of Ric Flair. Ric Flair had accidentally eaten the page of a book and was choking on it. Ric Flair is endearingly seen on It looks like the tide has turned once again. Prince of Tides. My goodness, what a match. Oh, nice counter. I hate it when there's nice counters that aren't by me. Triple H, this is why they call him the Game King. Triple H Triple is the H. ultimate. Let's face it, JR. Y2J Triple H is the ultimate. Let's face it, JR. No man in history has ever done. He became the first ever undisputed He's champion. like saying, he's basically saying, hurry up and whip and me against the announce table. Earlier, Stop trying to beat up Triple Stephanie. <laughs> might as well have a bullseye painted on his surgically repaired quad. The left thigh of the game. I think he might have one tattooed on there, actually. You know, Triple H has got to be worried about his leg. At what point, JR, do you accept that you are just too injured to continue? I don't think the game thinks like that, King. If Triple H's leg I think the King I think the game thinks in Spanish for some reason, King. The word quit is Hey, is uh Jericho gonna get disqualified for actually bumping into Stephanie there? You get out here, I'm gonna start crotch jumping, buddy. I'll I'll figure out which button it is eventually. There we go. Get out of here, man. I'm getting so much free momentum. Come on, Stephanie. You know you want this. Let's get back together, baby. I believe Jericho's broken. <laughs> Heading back into the ring now. Because Jericho is broken, and if I don't, I'm gonna run out of time. It's nothing new, but Triple H is getting inside the head of his opponent here. Two. All right, they're going to make me throw him out of the ring now. And he sends him flying to the outside. Black sandal, shade to the macho man. Except that I'm not going to be losing. Woohoo. There we go. Crotch shot from hell coming up. Stephanie, are you gonna let you get, you're not even pedigreeing him on the tape. You're setting yourself up to be backdropped. There's no other way that was ever gonna end Triple H. What the fuck? Uh, uh, my career has been destroyed by my sudden onset unnatural sentence cadence disease. I don't think that's part of the film. There's no way he's gonna be able to stand after that. Triple H exacting a measure of revenge. So I have an unknown objective. Injury, Probably if I get a I'll never forget just that King. get a finisher a going, I should be good. To watch Jericho nearly in the career of Triple H and it looks like he's looking to finish the job tonight. Man, I'm thankful that I'm not on the receiving end of that. I can tell you. Crush up. <laughs> I will summon you to your feet with my crush up. assassin preparing his foe for the now, is this going to reveal the mysterious hidden objective? He's got his shoulders Better I, ha I had to let him up. I don't know what the objective is. He can truly turn the tide. We can push the tempest by by the... Apparently this is it. Stephanie's in the ring? I think she's trying to get Jericho disqualified. That's... Oh no, the refs took the chair. Now what are you going to do, Steph? Uh-oh. Is Triple H going to, like, strike her and not get disqualified? That's make me really pissed off. The he was once happily married to. Is the referee going to allow... Well, the happy part doesn't last long. Oh, here we go. Simply in the coach. Okay, so now I just have to basically perform a pedigree. 
and he straps with a quick kick. <laughs> Here we go. Great job interfering, Steph. Jericho's hand is like three inches away. But there we are. I didn't actually ever get to strike Stephanie in the match, so I can't say that the cinematics are inconsistent with the rules. Apparently, if in those those various times Triple H tried to strike her in the cinematics, had he succeeded, he would have been disqualified, I guess. It's a different set of rules. I mean, anybody's allowed to beat up Stephanie. Nobody's allowed to beat up the lovely Miss Elizabeth. I, Different eras. And the result is Triple H has become the under Suddenly he has champion. more belts than he has working quadricep muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fucking crippled. You can barely walk in the ring and you still trip can kick Jericho's ass. That's so awesome you are, we get it. And your hair disappears into the full of your muscles because of problems with the uh, the game's texturing. The game has endured the pain. The, the pain of the game. That's his new nickname. Pain game. For what perhaps could have been the Americanization of Hakusha. What a display of courage. What a display of heart. Triple H, you are my hero. Triple H, I want to have your baby. <laughs> hey, check it out. They're advertising WWE TK14 back at the time of... Uh, 2002. I, I was waiting for the year to come up. The time of 2002. Yeah, it's interesting that they were advertising this game in 2002. That's intri interesting in one sense. It's also interesting they're advertising the game in the game, which you presumably already purchased. I guess that's why they're letting us do the... Uh, WWE is... I'm getting content matches for these videos. They're just... The, the WWE is not stopping them. I guess they're probably running them with ads. I don't, I don't even know. I don't usually watch my own videos through my own channel. You guys can tell me if there's ads. But no, they're letting people put these videos up. I, more, more power to them. I appreciate that. That's cool. I guess they consider it, unlike some other companies out there, free advertising. At any rate, folks, if you're enjoying this uh, LP, uh, consider going out and buying the game for yourself. Whether you do that or not, I hope you'll join me next time uh, for another exciting WrestleMania match. I am closing off this recording session. But uh, I will be back for more in the near future. I'm Sirius JG. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, even with um, one leg and um, no wife, Triple H can still kick your ass. Goodbye.